Oh, yeah. Welcome to the next uh, practical uh, session of uh, embedded software testing. Uh, today we will uh, see the uh, exercises regarding uh, test cases uh, uh, and scenarios uh, from a set of requirements uh, which we had uh, studied about the requirements in the last class and try to study that uh, with uh, requirements uh, and the corresponding test cases. So we had also gone through the example of SRS it's called a embedded unit instrument so we will just try to recap that then we have a test review checklist so this is based on high level testing so there is a sample here this is typically being done as a completion step in order to take the credit of the embedded software testing high level uh, testing that has been done on the set of requirements. So this uh, checklist will talk about the rules and whether those rules are followed, and whether uh, that embedded software testing can be taken for the next level. Like this, it will be used. So that is how the rules have been used. So once uh, these two exercises are done, we will try to uh, continue the exercise in terms of identify and establish uh, traceability matrix for the developed test scenarios from the set of embedded unit instrument requirements. So you know the traceability, traceability basically is required to see and report that from the requirements to test cases how the coverage is there, how we are able to trace different requirements to test cases. Similarly test cases to requirements, so two are different basically I mean Though we call it as a traceability, so both are required because the coverage perspective is different. So, the test cases to requirements is called as a upward traceability, and requirements to test cases are called as downward traceability. Okay. Now, let's try to recap. The requirements. So SRS one talks about the embedded unit instrument operating in the five operational modes such as unit, operational, maintenance, download, and pin. Here you can see different modes of operation. So how they can enter and exit. So this is a parallel mode of operation. This fail, which can go from any of these unit, operational, maintenance, download at any point of time, based on the different conditions. So those conditions are nothing but the modes of operations. So typically, SRS two onwards, so we have different modes of operation requirements. I think we had gone through this SRS two regarding modes of operations, SRS three as well with the init mode, SRS four about operation mode, five is about maintenance mode, and the six again maintenance mode. So likewise, we have different. Modes of operation SRS2 to SRS5, 6, other. Similarly, we have a performance requirements in terms of SRS7 to 11. Here, uh, uh, we know that uh, the booting time requirements and the workload, the performance uh, of the processor or the CPU, how much it should be, and also along with the timing and the workload, we have the memory related. Uh, performance requirements such as flash memory, RAM memory, stack memory. So how are we going to verify those let us try to go with some few example test cases so that that is a framework on which the entire testing can be taken up further in terms of test scenarios as well as execution. Similarly we have a communication requirements in terms of how the instrument unit can communicate with the external world it is through CAN messages we know that because the first requirement talks about the different messages it is receiving and based on different messages it is going to different modes of operation. So there is the watchdog requirements you know that watchdog should be pulsed with the less than 500 milliseconds if it does not pulse it is going to reset. So these are some of the requirements for which test cases have been developed. So let us try to understand the test cases. In one of the session, 
we studied about uh, how a test spec or the test cases should be existing. So we need to have the requirement document, test plan. We assume that test plan is available and test spec which is nothing but the test cases, scenarios corresponding to the requirements. Then we are going to group it, then we are going to trace it. These are some of the specific activities that we do for developing the test cases and in the test specification we are going to have a strategy in terms of how we can do it then practical steps which are nothing but the test procedure this is how we do. So these are some of the things that we need to do so we know we have gone through example of template how it should look like in one of the theoretical class so let us say to understand the, the test case perspective how it can be developed. So, so we have about a one, two, three levels of uh, four levels of uh, requirements in terms of modes of operation, performance requirements, communication requirements, and watchdog requirements. Okay. Okay. So we know the templates. How we are going to use it? The first section should talk about the test case identification for each of the requirements. You can see these are each requirements we need to first identify. Test case, I guess uh, we have gone through this template how it should look like. Like you should identify with the test ID, it should be unique for each test case, and what is the input for that particular test case? So, what is the condition that for this input it should? Exhibit, then what is the expected result that we are going to have? Similarly, for each of the requirement, like we are going to take up SRS2, SRS3, SRS4, likewise, we are going to have for each of the requirement. So, that is how we are going to develop test cases, and the grouping is based on different functionalities like uh, first few cases we will concentrate, concentrate on the modes of operation the next one uh, we concentrate on uh, uh, performance requirements and next grouping is based on the timing and next group could be based on the watchdog likewise we can group it but before grouping first of all we need to have is the Test cases individually identified for each of the requirements is very important. And basically, we can adjust like what test case can go into what and how can we club it or is it duplicate or redundant in any aspects that we can do. So, first, first and foremost thing is develop the test cases for each of the requirements. Once we are done with all that, then we are going to have a grouping. Once the grouping is done, and we know that for each group, there is a set of conditions that need to be existing before we start the practical step or the test procedures. So what are those conditions they are called as preconditions. So precondition for example I have put for one of the test case we can have test group 1. So, which is nothing but relating modes of operation. So, what are the things that we need? We need to power on the unit and set the below values. Below values could be something like uh, what are the inputs for uh, the unit should be hooked. So, what are those? One could be CAN message adapter should be up similarly any interconnected 
interfaced memory subunits should be powered ok so what else we need some discrete we could need should be up likewise we want to have the preconditions so the precondition can be unique or different based on the type of group group that we are using so for so for modes of operation we need can messages should be coming because without that we cannot uh, uh, test the modes of operation requirements similarly uh, we need to apply power a voltage of 5.0 volt, 5 so like this we are going to have it and some of the requirements we may not be able to do dynamically correct no? or when the target is running so those the list for static analysis where we need to do it static execution is by seeing the code so like performance requirements some of like memory map those things you don't need to execute on the target. So those cases we are going to list it out here telling that that group of or that specific scenarios can be tested statically or static analysis based on that. Similarly the template talks about test scenarios categorized under the functional or operational requirements extra test cases scenarios categorized under non functional requirements etc. That means basically whatever the user or business Based functionality means the instrument should be doing some functions like it should uh, uh, rotate the motor. That is an actual requirement. Some of the non-functional requirements uh, such as uh, it should power up within five seconds. Something of those test cases, uh, they are not uh, business related or user related. That is all performance or supporting sort of a requirement. So likewise we are going to have the appendices updated for the test case, test case document that is one section that we have and the first sections what we have seen is test cases identification per each requirement, so this is what we are going to do. So for example we will study few requirements and few test cases per se, okay. so SRS2 we know that what it talks about, it talks about the modes of operation. Like we know that the instrument shall set the mode to failure mode in the following cases, there is a R logic. So, one of these conditions, one of these three conditions, if it occurs, it is going to enter into failure mode, that is about the thing. So, here what is the input? These contents of this having the inputs. So let us try to understand one content or one condition when mode is in maintain store. So mode is an input and received message is an input. So what is the output? Fail mode. That means again mode set to fail mode. So condition is what? This itself is a condition. So first condition, second condition, third condition. One of these conditions exists. It is going to enter into failure mode. Okay. Let's try to draw a example of cases. First test case. Let's try to define. So we know that mode is an input. Receive message is an input. Why? Because can message is it is having a dependency, right? So message is one input. Mode is another input. If those two, these two are inputs, we want to apply some conditions for that input, and we are going to get the expected result. So what will happen if mode is in maintenance mode? Correct. Yes, this input is satisfied, and when we get a receive message of zero one CRLF, don't worry about what is it CRLF message. Just assume that because we are focusing or our emphasis is to test. This portion, not the actual data. That maybe a robustness in terms of a different message other than zero and zero. What will happen? That maybe we can define later. But we'll start with a normal case 
saying that we have fed two inputs maintenance mode and a message with zero and serial serial mode directly as per the requirement we should go to fail mode so this we have tested here and in the next case you can see we are trying to test with a silent message zero to CRLF. In that case, also it will go to fail mode. Similarly, the third condition when the mode is in init mode, if the status is in error state, that is during initialization, if any error occurs, it will go for failure mode. So these are straightforward test cases that we have seen for this requirement. Similarly, if more conditions are there, we are going to apply as per that. Okay. Next, let's try to define. Now, this is our logic. So, that means any of these conditions or multiple of these conditions occurs. So, we have something like A or B or C equal to D. D means it is a failure mode. So, we are going to have a truth table sort of a thing where either A can be set to true or B can be set to true, C can be set to true. In that condition, this should go to fail. And next one, A, B set to true, A, C set to true, A, B, C set to true. In this condition also it is going to go for failure. So likewise we are going to have this is called that MCDC or the modified condition decision logic because based on the condition different decisions are taken here. Here when A becomes true the condition will be failed. When B is true condition will be failed. C is true condition will be failed. Similarly A and B both are true. Condition will be failed, right? Both are true, fail. Both are true, fail. Similarly, A, B, C, last case, will become to true to be fail. Next, we have uh, what else left? Everything we left, right? Uh, everything we have written. So, in this kind of things, it is uh, good to have something like a truth table. We can define that way. It will be easier actually. Maybe I will try to have one more column added. So, A, B, C, and the output is what we are trying to set for different values. So, we know that combinations of A, B, C we will try to set 0, 0, sorry, 1, 0, 0. Output will be fair. Similarly, 0, 1, 0 or it will be fail. This will become 0, this will become 0, C will become 1. Next condition 0, 1, 1. Typical truth table we are going to have it for all the combinations. Moreover, we may not need because we know the result of this. Why we need why we may not need is the independency we need to prove. I will try to explain that. Okay, here you can see the multiple two table combinations like C is true, output will be false, and B is true, output will be false. Similarly, both are true, will become false. And now we are going to set A as 1 and we are going to vary it here, this is going to be still true. The last condition is 0, 0, 0, it will become true. That means true means there is no failure or not a failure. Here in this case, this is a failure, right? Okay, one more condition is all should be 1, it will become failure. F means basically failure.
okay okay so for each of these we need to develop the test cases adding the inputs accordingly okay now we have tested about this normal cases of with the truth table and modified condition by the purpose next within each of these we can identify other test case or other group of test cases such as okay i'll try to draw that only so input is mode maintenance mode and receive message is 01 cr lf right that we have already tested this will become fail okay the next condition within this test case input mode is not of maintenance mode that's not we don't know what mode it is so it will become no fail correct because we are not at all there in that actually yeah the next one input is in maintenance mode but the received message is not 01 cr it is something else x x x x whatever it is so this also will become no fail so like this the combinations that we need to have that is very important once this is done then we are done with the complete test cases and we are going to apply it okay the next thing that we need to take care is the independency very important term you can see in the above case a b c is set here it is record false now we have proven only the b has changed from 0 to 1 whereas the remaining things are constant there also we need to prove right because remaining thing is not constant here we have seen b has changed along with c also has changed we don't know because of what the failure would have occurred so better to have a independency such as setting it back to zero so that we are proving the independency with this because of this only the failure has occurred and not because of this or the combination of this so that is how independently we are going to prove similarly for other cases also like we have a zero 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 no fail and since this has toggled these two bits because of this they are getting the pay so that's how the effect of the inputs we need to tackle it appropriately so that independence is there is one of the important thing that they look for when we are going to write the test cases so that is how we are going to have for different sort of combinations and inputs for that particular requirement okay next one next one is srs3 this talks about uh, what uh when the mode is init mode and the status is no error state that means no error when the init is in the when the mode is in init mode the instrument shall set into the operational mode so two inputs mode and status init mode no error it will become operational mode mode received message mode and received message so this is not a right test case maintenance mode okay let's not write to this we will try to put a simpler form mode status okay non init mode 
okay let's put it more simpler it is in eat mode status is error so what it will become it should not be not of operational mode it is for sure because the requirement says it should be there in the operational mode only when required so by going through the operational mode requirements it is clear for us probably by seeing if it is not of operational mode what is the mode we can take care let's try to go through the requirement again we will come to know requirement is uh, okay yes it is going to go for the failure mode because if it is going to be no error state then it will be operational otherwise it is going to go for failure mode that's what it said right okay so nothing but it is nothing but fail mode so likewise we are going to add test cases by looking at the requirement so for three we have done okay four is regarding maintenance status and status alive messages and six is about the, the next set of messages zero four zero four Likewise, we are going to add it. I can see particular SRS and for that test cases we are going to add. One more thing you would have noticed is interface requirements tested. So what will happen is some of the signals that are having a dependency for a particular requirements. Suppose for this functional requirement, the signal dependency is there, some discrete, and that we need to list. and uh, by listing that we are also trying to test that particular interface requirement so that also we need to cover it as an input so that may not be a full fledged functional requirements but there is a dependent interface requirement okay the next one is performance requirements let's try to understand what performance requirement talks about the entire process of booting up till operational mode shall not take more than one second that means upon power up we should not take more than one second to become operational mode so how we are going to do there is a two inputs that means we need to measure right measure the time that is what it says between boot up Till op mode. Okay, this is something like assertive test case where we don't have a negative or where uh, what is it called? Uh, we are expecting something uh, with some actions. So here action is nothing but between boot up, boot up. How is going to happen? Upon power up, that is an input. Input is power up and mode. And condition is power up. Enter the stuff or boot up. Boot up how it happens? With the power up button, power on. We can say the action is called as power on or boot up. So output is time difference between operational mode entry from power on time. so something some instrument called oscilloscope okay with oscilloscope we need two tapping points or we don't need two tapping points or depending on what sort of a processor we have where it can be suppose uh, power up has a pin number 20 where you can see the glitch of the signal pulsing at a certain level 5 volts if it is we can observe that with one pin captured there and uh, operational mode if it is tied up with a led something say led 2 it will have a port something like a gpio port or whatever it is so these two we can see it so that we can see the 
reference as one with the power of pin other one as the, uh, the LED port when it is going to uh, become operational mode. So that difference we can find out with the help of uh, this. So that will become a test case in terms of measuring. So input is power up mode. So so we need to give a pulse to or pulse or reset to pin 20 booting the processor measure using oscilloscope what will happen is expected result is less than one second that is what is the expected result right so that is how we are going to measure it with the power supply and try to validate the test case. Okay. Okay. Next type of requirements we have communication requirements. Let's see. Okay. Here you can see two requirements are there. The instrument shall communicate through CAN messages with outside interface. The instrument shall communicate its alive status at one second, at least one second. It means two things are there. We can combine these requirements to have multiple cases under one group, saying that proving this also can prove that it is communicating and it is also communicating its status at one second. So it is just a validation of this basically. So there is no verification, like there is no input that we can tweak or we can modify. So, what sort of a test cases we can have? Test case one will have observe the output can message check whether the can message are received at every one second next one check whether the can message belongs to a live status these are important steps to validate this requirements right ok next negative type or when the instrument is powered this is going to happen so switch off UI so what will happen is no messages are observed no messages should be observed outside so this is proving that the instrument will communicate only when it is powered off outside the box and uh, the rate at which the can messages are coming how we can verify the rate is based on the timestamp because every can message will have a timestamp in the a logger outside uh, in the host with that logger we can see the difference between uh, message 2 minus message 1 that should be 1 seconds. Of course, it may not be exactly 1 second, it could be something like so 9, 80, 80 seconds, it depends again to 1, 0, 0. Here, tolerance of plus or minus 20 is there, you can see it can fall anything between 980 to 1020. Zero zero. So, depends on type of system. Tolerance also will be there, so you may not get exact thing. So they will specify in the requirement accordingly, saying that for this tolerance it should work. So that way we need to verify the uh, such requirements, any timing requirement, or any analog, or any of the outputs that have a tolerance, we can verify that. So this is how communication requirements can be tested with the test cases this way. The last one being the watchdog requirements. So there are two requirements here. Uh, the instrument shall configure the internal watchdog to generate a reset to microcontroller with a threshold duration of 500 milliseconds. So what it means is it has a configuration saying that when it is up and operational, it should be configured 
for 500 milliseconds such that the watchdog will be satisfied with a pulse of less than 500 milliseconds. That is the next requirement. If it is not, the watchdog is going to reset it because it is configured for 500 milliseconds, right? Okay. So here. Cases we need to verify in the sense that first one is verify the configuration of the watchdog. This is theoretically, or by seeing the code, or by seeing the registers, we can validate dynamically, we can validate such a way that we can capture the pulse of the watchdog, usually watchdog is a circuitry, it has a counter and that counter is configured for 500 and there is a decrement counter the 500 becomes 499, 498, 427 like this, when it becomes 0 it is going to it is going to reset or pulse the reset pin of the processor such that the processor gets resets, so how are you going to emulate this, somehow you make sure that you reconfigure the watchdog or you uh, make it hang the program that is there in the uh, this thing or capture the pulse so what is responsible for pulsing the watchdog so that should be less than 500 milliseconds so that is what the second requirement talks about at least once in every 500 milliseconds or less it should be there so one is configuration other one is whether it is pulsing properly or not we are going to verify this is how we can verify the watchdog sort of a requirement okay so likewise we are going to have the test cases defined with test ID inputs conditions expected results and appendixes we have studied now having seen all this let us try to understand the review checklist we have done the testing of the high level requirements whatever I have demonstrated so far is writing the test cases on the requirements and how procedures can be written from this is what we have understood. Now, having done this, we need to understand the checklist. Usually, this will be a getting criteria for a particular test plan or test cases to make sure that the rules of the particular verification of the test cases are adhering to the requirement or as per the need. That is what we are going to do. It. Okay. Okay, so this is an example template. Uh, generally, they use it. Uh, it is again specific to the organization or the person or the specific process that is being followed in the type of embedded. Let's try to go through this and try to fill up the checklist on what we have done so far. Okay, first one: our templates followed during the development of test case data. Yes, we had a document this template which we have followed, right? Yes. Are the valid equivalence classes analysis applied to all inputs of high level requirements? Yes, we have seen the equivalence classes in terms of the complete truth table and all that. Right? And uh, set of Range in terms of inputs we have considered. Are limits values used for external signal to create specific cases? Uh, here there is no external signal, but CAN is used. So there is a limit in terms of the signals like CRO, the values coming from there we have used so to become less. For inputs structured in a table. Are bounds and one intermediate value of the table used to create test cases? Equivalence class. So 
there is no structured input table, so this is not applicable. Is MCDC function analysis used for the logic equations? Yes. Are particular test cases created for time related functions and state transitions? Yes, but we have done only for the time related. There is no transitions we have. Is one robustness test case created for each external inputs? Yes, we have the negative or the different values of of inputs that we try to put it like robustness. So that is what is there. Is identification format of test cases? Yes, we have seen that every test case has its own unique ID. Is each high level requirement covered by at least one test case and one correct one? It's very important. Correct one is also very important. So this based on the review, we need to. Fill this whether correctly it is done. Yes, we have done for each of the requirement for each one test case. Is each test case created covered by one scenario and by the correct one? Yes. The test cases like we have a test case for each requirement and that requirement has multiple scenarios and the correct scenarios we have identified. Are values of inputs and outputs defined for each test case? Yes, we have defined that. Is each scenario qualified as normal case, robust case, case type? This probably we are not done. This needs to be done based on the validation of the test cases. This will be taken care of. So we are not publicly validating and reviewing all that. So once we have that, we can define these things. That's what with this justification we should be able to report it saying that we know what is my action for this uh, whether it is correctly done or not. Is the cost test coverage analysis available? It is commercial on itself. I think we do not have that. We say so there is a two section one is guidelines, other one is rules. Rules are mandated to be followed as yes. There is no solid justification to do that. It is also called as deviation and deviation of program. Without which the report will not be accepted by the designated authority or approval from customer as well as senior. Guidelines is the description of the scenarios clear and accurate? Somewhat it is. So I will say no. We can add more description. Are the expected results defined for each scenario? Are it Bench specification depends for each test case. Uh, what we have done is we have done the grouping and identified the test bench or the setup that we require. Right? Yes. The preconditions defined for each test case. Yes, we have seen that it exists. So this is how we are going to fill the test case uh, checklist. It's called verification of test cases. Its objective and description, and whether saying that is it follow up. So, that is what we have to do for each of the developed test case from the requirements. So, that is how checklist will be filled. Okay. Traceability this will continue in the next. Practical session in terms of upward traceability and traceability. So, as I said, from test cases to requirements, it is called as upward traceability, from downward traceability, which is requirement to test cases. Okay. Thank you.